To Stardock. In these short bios, we look at famous celebrities and historical people so that you know their story. Let's get going. Earlier this week, superstar rapper Drake celebrated the 1 2 3, which represented his accomplishments as the first artist to have the top three songs on the Billboard charts. During his celebration, he made it known to give thanks to a specific artist before him who had inspired his career, which was rapper Lil Bow Wow, aka Shad Moss. I didn't know how else to bring in. I didn't know how else to bring in one, two, three. I had to live with Wizzle, oh, man. man. Come on, we do. Come on, man. Oh, we do it. I wanna call into your local station and as it, what? I want to thank you, man. I just had to see Wizzle. I had to see Wizzle in person. You know, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be no me, and that's why I'm a. You know the rest. That's why I'm a rock with y'all forevermore. I appreciate y'all. In the last few years, Bow Wow has taken a lot of L's in social media due to the amount of capping he's been exposed of. However, many people and TV personality Bow Wow, aka Shad Moss was born on the 9th of March, 1987. He was born in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio is where I'm from, I heard what you said. Well, I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, and the chronic tour, I came to Columbus, Ohio. Early on in his life, about the age of three, he would take an interest in the rap music his mother would listen to. And, um, you know, I got on stage and I had, did my thing, and next thing you know, Snoop wanted me to go backstage. So I went backstage, he talked to me, and told me he wanted me to fly to L.A., and I flew to L.A., and the music industry just opened up the doors for me, and that's how I just started. He would often impersonate artists such as Snoop Dogg, Corrupt, Dr. Dre, and many more. Because of his love of the music, his mother, Teresa Cordwell, took Bow Wow to his first Snoop Dogg concert in LA. Snoop Dogg invited him on stage because his mum had him on her shoulders in the crowd. He got so much love from the crowd, they were throwing money at him and the Death Row team and Snoop Dogg invited him backstage. This was where he was originally named Kid Gangster. He would go on tour with them and perform at each show as part of the act. He recorded a song under the name Kid Gangsta, which was written by death row artist at the time, Corrupt. In late 1993, Kid Gangsta was changed to Lil Bow Wow by Snoop Dogg as people tended to look at him like a young Snoop. Snoop actually mentioned that he was not keen on the name Lil Snoop as he wanted Bow Wow to have his own identity. So the name was confirmed in that same year Lil Bow Wow performed at Arsenio Hall, introduced to the world by no other than hip hop's villain of the decade, Suge Knight. But for me, it's 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 written in stone. Like that's yeah. what it was. Like it's yeah. documented. You got interviews with Suge is talking to Arsenio Hall, and he's like, um, you know, when Arsenio Hall brought his show back yeah. right before Suge got locked up, and he was on the couch doing the interview. He told um, Arsenio, and Arsenio was like, "Yo, I already coming back to the whole show back in the day with a lot. You brought a little kid with you. Yeah. The kid name was and Suge said, yeah, Bow Wow. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. the crowd started going crazy. He's like, yeah, I, he said, I brought him to you, but you made him a star. It was yeah. that night on Arsenio Hall that, that did that. And yeah. a lot of people don't know, I wasn't even supposed to perform. Suge didn't want me to mm. be seen. Like, I was like the little yeah. secret under yeah. the rug, but you know, my mom and them just pushed me like, oh, Talking about he put his first record out in 2000. I don't give a fuck about his first record coming out in 2000. He was fucking it up before that. That's just when JD was ready to put him out. The nigga been ready. When we discovered the nigga, he was ready to go. We put him on a couple songs on Death Row. They had him on some bullshit ass songs. He was going hard on the motherfucker. He was on your, um, the doggy style. Huh? He was doing all the talking. He was acting and shit, see? <laughs> we, we read the nigga as an actor. Early on, when I put him on my album, I had him doing skits and shit. That's why I say his mother's a hell of a woman to allow us to, to put him in a position to say those things and to do those things. Because I had in my mind, I wanted to have 
you know, a flashback of when I was in school and, you know, what I wanted to be when I was a kid. And, you know, he was the little kid that was around, so he was inspiring me. So I was like, man, let's put this little nigga on some shit, Dre. And Dre was like, fuck it. Get that nigga in there. That nigga did every voice on that song. G's and Hustlers on the little skit. Mm-hmm. I want to be a fireman. He did that one. The police officer. I want to be a police. So he did that voice. This nigga did all of the voices. He did even the voices in the background. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm your substitute teacher. My name is Mr. Buckworth. The topic for today is what you would like to be when you grow up. You, over there in the jean shirt, what you want to be when you grow up? I would like to be a police officer. All right, that's a pretty good profession. You over there in that black shirt. What you want to be when you grow up? I would like to be a fireman. All right, that's a pretty good profession too. Hey, you in the back with those French braids. What's your name? My name is Snoop. Hi, Snoop. What you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a motherfucking hustler. You better ask somebody. You want some fuck that right here. It's either go now or we never gonna go, you know? It was a gutsy, ballsy move, but we had to do it. It is strange looking at Bow Wow's more commercial career. It was actually initiated by Death Row, a more grimy, gangster sound of music. Lil Bow Wow also notes remembering seeing Tupac in the studio when he was at Death Row at a young age. He also featured in Snoop Dogg's music video, Gin and Juice. That nigga was acting, man. And then from there, we took him to the video scene when we did a video for Jenny Juice. You know, we had him jumping up and down on the couch and shit, fucking up one little bad little kid, you know what I'm saying? Made his little debut, had his little braids, his little hoodie on, looking real West Coast. During the Snoop Dogg and Suge Knight division, Bow Wow was sent back to Ohio as Snoop and other members of the crew feared for his safety and influence because of all the heat circulating in Death Row Records. In 1998, Bow Wow, now 11, was contacted by Jermaine Dupri, who helped further and shape his career. I met with Jermaine, him and Snoop were very close. And so Snoop told him, yo, JD, I got this little kid, you know, he raps, you know, I don't want this little guy to go to waste. You know, the first time I heard Bow Wow rap, I was amazed at how he used the crowd and how he knew what to do without having a record. So he came off like, you know, like he had, he'd been here before, you know what I mean? That's one special thing about Bow Wow, he come off to me like, he was somebody in the past or something like that. It's amazing to see somebody that young that really can captivate the crowd the way he does. Working with Jermaine is like, just so fun. Cause he's not like your average dog, you know? He's like a kid. When it comes to homes, flushed out, chrome, stuck out in traffic. Jermaine Dupree was actually notoriously known for discovering and working with many young talents such as Criss Cross, Usher, Mariah Carey, and many more. Here is a clip of the first show Bow Wow did where he met Jermaine Dupree for the first time in ATL. The first recorded track Bow Wow did with Jermaine Dupri was actually on the Wild Wild West soundtrack entitled Stick Up. Greatest little artist, got a lot of charisma, spunk, you know what I'm saying, he remind me of like a little me or like a little JD. He got personality and that's what's, that's what's so so deaf, that's what we bring to the table, you know what I'm saying. A lot of artists don't have personality and plus on top of that Bow Wow was like the cutest. He was That's My Name the album Doggy Bag was released with singles Take You Home which peaked at number 72 on the Hot 100 and 21 
on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. Thank you with Jagged Edge, number one on the R&B chart. Doggy Bag peaked at number 11 on the Billboard 200 and number two on the top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart and was certified platinum. Overall, a decent sophomore album. Not quite as well as his debut album, but honourable. After this album, Bow Wow stepped into the movie business with his debut lead in the classic film, Like Mike. Uh, can I get your autograph? Sure, Dirk. Uh, it's actually for my niece. What's her name? Uh, it's, uh, Dirk. Yes, it's like Mike grossed $51.4 million in North America and $10.8 million overseas for a total worldwide gross of $62.3 million against its budget of $30 million. The film opened fifth at the box office with a three-day gross of $12.2 million from 2,410 theatres and $19 million over its five-day opening. What's it like being a role model? Because you've got a lot of moms out here with their kids and a lot of them said one of the reasons why they're here is that they... At this stage of his career, Bow Wow had all of the young females crushing on him and all the young boys getting their hair braided to be just like him. In 2002, Lil Bow Wow dropped the Lil from his name and was in the process of trying to rebrand himself as he entered the difficult 14 to 16 year old period. A lot of childhood stars get to this place where they are too old to make kiddie music but too young to make love and profanity songs. The next few years were going to be very groundbreaking for Bow Wow if he wanted to continue and strive in this industry. By this point, Bow Wow was known as the modern Criss Cross. He was the voice of the minority youth. He sold out Madison Square Garden with his screen tour featuring artists such as B2K and many more. Where at? I mean, it's just, that, that's why I love coming here, man. There's so much love in the air. The fans is great. And uh, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we got this tour coming about. Myself, I manage B2K. It's a screen tour tour, so I mean, there's a lot of things we're doing right now. In 2003, Bow Wow released his third album, Unleashed which was promoted alongside of a lot of controversy. At the time, Bow Wow had had a fallout with his producer and writer Jermaine Dupri and decided to make a project without his influence. He was also in subject to a competition beef-like energy with Lil Romeo, Master P's son. Unleashed featured songs such as Let's Get Down and My Baby, which had a decent mark on the charts, but not at all like the same level of his previous success. During the next year or two, Bow Wow stepped back from making movies such as the hood classic Roll Bounce and Johnson's Family Vacation, which both did pretty good in the box office. His next album, Wanted, in 2005, with the debut single Let Romeo's This Song Fresh As Mid. Overall, Wanted was a great comeback project for Bow Wow, considering the backlash he got from Unleashed. Wanted debuted at number 3 on the US Billboard 200 chart selling 120,000 copies in the first week. Bow Wow around this time was also featured in the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, which also did huge in the box office. His last solo album, Price of Fame, was released in 2006 after his public breakup with artist Sierra. This album featured the song Out of My System, which was packed at number 22 on the Hot 100 and number two on the rap chart. The price of fame was certified gold. Bow Wow and Amarian released a collaborative album on December the 11th, 2007, Face Off. The first single was Girlfriend, which peaked at number 33 on the Hot 100. We were going through a company renovation. Bow Wow was actually labelled as Mr. 106 and Park throughout his career as he had the most appearances on the show. Since then, Bow Wow has his own TV show, Growing Up Hip Hop. He's been filming for the new Fast and Furious and working on his final album. Back home to Atlanta, so I'm getting back in business, so I'm getting back in the office. New album, which will be my last. I'm good, I'm, I'm laying the layers. Um, my last album will drop this year. 10 songs, that's it. Snoop, narrating the whole project. It's a specialty project. I put a lot of time and effort into it. I've never said this to nobody. My manager called me one day. He said, if you're gonna if you're gonna close out your music career and you wanna open up the new floodgate for what you're about to do, 
I got the title for your last album. And I said, well, what should it be? Before 30. Also in 2020, Bow Wow completed on the third season of The Masked Singer as The Frog. He finished in third place. Bow Wow is only 34 years old. What do you think is next for him?